Hi, my name is PK Gulati. I'm the founder of The Assembly. If you're here, you're probably watching an Assembly workshop. We do these workshops every week, and these are prepared by the Assembly team in Dubai. These workshops cover ideas from data sciences, hardware design, automation, robotics, drones, and all the other exponential technologies that can, you can think about. The idea is for us to learn more than what curriculum teaches us. And we are trying to bring people to start working with their own hands with these technologies which have the capacity of changing the world. So welcome to this workshop and learn more about new wonders what you can build. Hello everyone, welcome to another workshop. My name is Adib Amr Siddiqui and in this workshop we'll be using an, a popular RPA software called UiPath. Um, what is an RPA? An RPA stands for Robotics Process Automation. It is automation for repetitive tasks, which is very commonly used today in big to small companies uh, to automate repetitive tasks. Um, so let's get started. All right, starting with the workshop now. What is the assembly? The assembly is a smart lab based out of N5. And since December 2014, we have conducted over 350 free workshops. These workshops are divided into three main categories. First one being the hack workshops, which include embedded systems, IOTs, hardware, things like Arduinos and Raspberry Pis. The second category includes code, which includes uh, software, API projects, uh, frameworks, web application, desktop applications, etc. Third category being artificial intelligence, data science, machine learning, topics related to uh, what deep learning and etc. etc. Um, our target target audiences include mainly professionals, students, uh, teachers, anyone in the field, anyone not in the field, anyone who's just willing to learn. These, these workshops focus on smart technology and, and practical applications. To stay in touch with us, to connect with us, follow us on our forum, members.theassembly.ae. Follow us on Facebook, The Assembly at Make Smart Things. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, or, or YouTube as well. RPAs. RPA stands for Robotic Process Automation. It is a business process automation technology based on metaphorical software robots. Um, they are also known as software robotics. Uh, it is a technology that takes the help of bots, programs that can perform repetitive tasks daily directly from a user interface. And these are fast to deploy and easy to update. Bots can be a powerful catalyst for system integrations and further process automation. Benefits include low technical barriers, no, no programming skills are required, um, accuracy, these bots are extremely accurate as compared to humans, um, they are always, they're, they're, they can be online 24 seven, unlike humans who can only work in shifts. Um, that also brings in productivity, increased productivity, cycle times are much more faster compared to manual process approaches, reliability, they're always going on about their work, uh, Consistency as well. They follow a set of code, a set of instructions that are given to them. They cannot move move right and left from those instructions. They are supposed to follow those instructions only. Um, improved mo employee morale as well. Workers can dedicate more time engaging and in, in in other words, work instead of repetitive tasks. In 2016, annual expenditure on RPA was 612 million dollars. In 2019, it was 2.3 billion. This shows that there's an increased dependency and the use of RPA is ever growing. Um, in 2022, it is expected to be $4.3 billion. We'll get to see and it's going to grow. All right. Now talking about this workshop. In this workshop, we'll be using UiPath, which is one of the many software that are available in the market right now for RPAs. What we are going to do is we're going to try and create a shopping bot. We're calling it a shopping bot for simplicity, but for now, it's going to go over popular e-commerce sites is going to go it's going to search for a product that we will be providing it to us it will search for a particular product and it will get us the the top three results the names the names on those results the prices on those, on those results and the weightings similarly um, it will go over maybe one to two sites and it will get all those results and, and put it in an excel sheet right now, there are endless possibilities to what we can do with RPS, but for now, to get started, we'll be doing this. Alright, let's get started. Alright, step number one. 
Um, let's assume you do not have UiPath installed on the computer. So let's make a Google search, type UiPath and go to the first link, it's uipath.com and you go to try UiPath for free, all right? We are trying to download UiPath Studio. So sign up with your email, put in your organization name, first name, last name, country, email, and a very strong password. Okay, sign up. Now it's going. It's, it needs to needs to verify your email as well. So I already have my email open over here. UiPath platform. Verify your email. Um, that's it. You registered now on the website, and we we'll move over to the downloading process now. The first thing you see when you log in is the download UiPath Studio button. This is what you're going to click right now. It's going to download a file. It's, it's going to take roughly about one to two minutes. Once it's complete. Um, there's a simple sign there's a simple process all right once the download is complete you need to open the file and once you open the file the auto the st st installation process is fairly simple it's just a next to next process and it takes about one to two minutes to install and then it should open the it should open the application itself right and once the application in opens you need to sign in using the using the details you put in on the website all right and then go here and for now for starters let's just make a simple process right start with a simple process i'm going to call it um, process one right this is just to get us started so that the shopping bot does not seem like a like a bit of a pickle right this is the interface this is what we see um, uipath divides its set of functions in in terms called activities um, this is where you'll find most of your things over here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to open the main workflow. I'm going to open the browser and perform a Google search. All right. So drag and drop the sequence over here. Uh, I'm going to drop activity over here. Search for open browser. And you need to insert the URL over here. Again, this takes in visual, visual basic uh, syntax. Uh, so, you need, if you're providing string values, they need to be inside quoted, quoted form, uh, quoted quotation marks always. So, sorry about that. Yeah, I'm gonna put in HTTPS and Google.com. Right, um, links fine with it. Drop in act, drop in an activity over here. Um, so, what what the goal here is to Okay, let's just test, test it out first, right? Let's try to see if google.com actually opens or not, right? Yep, that's it. So, till now it works. Again, uh, you can go around testing it at, uh, at any step you, uh, at any step you want. So, uh, for me personally, I like to, I like to keep testing at every step I make. Uh, so now I want what I want to do is I want to perform a Google search. So, what happens when you go to google.com? When you first open google.com, you click on this box over here and you search for whatever you want. You search for whatever you're looking for, right? So, open google.com. I'm going to search for an activity called click. Actually, uh, yeah, okay, let's search for click first. Right. Now, UiPath has this amazing feature with where you, in, you can indicate the element you want to actually search or type into or click. You can you can indicate the element on the browser so i select indicate element over here it takes me to the browser automatically and i can this is where i want to click right so i just click over here and now uh once this once the browser opens so uh it's called a sequence because it's going in steps right so you're always going to understand this code over you're always going to understand this process chrono chronology chronologically right uh, top to bottom right so first it opens the browser, then it clicks this box over here on the, in the search, the search box over there. What's next? We type. So there's another activity called type into. Um, I'm just going to select this over here. Again, I can search, I can indicate the element inside the browser again. Um, similarly, like I said, this click wasn't important over here, but, but just for demonstration purposes, I did, decided to put over here. But 
Even if you don't put the click over here, UA path will automatically be able to decide where you want to type. So you indicate the element. This is where you want to type. What do I want to type? So suppose I want to type uh, the assembly. Dubai. All right. This is what I, what I want to search. All right. And how do you how do you go how do you how do you move forward on Google search? So you press enter or you or you can just click this button over here, Google search. So for now, we'll just put in the but uh, the, the, we'll click the Google search button. Again, I look for the activity and indicate element. This is where, this is what I want to click, right? And that's it, right? Now let's run this and hope it works, right? Opens the browser again, searches for the assembly Dubai, entered, right? Uh, okay, not exactly what you were looking for, but it works, right? That's that's a goal for now, all right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to de delete this activity now and I'm going to move forward with our, with our actual workshop, right? All right, moving on with the actual workshop. Um, first of all, what I want to do is I want to open a new process over here, a new sequence, and I'm going to call this our shopping bot, right? Bot, that's what we're going to call it, right? So it opens it in a new window. And step number one, uh, we're gonna take user input. All right, um, let me just walk you through the steps you want, right? Like all the steps you want. Actually, you know what? Um, I'll open my notepad over here and I'll just write the steps you want over here. Step number one, get user input, right? Get user input. Step number two, uh, open browser. Step, num step number three, open amazon.ae. And A and perform search, right? So let's get on, get on with these these three steps first, right? First of all, uh, to get the user input, we can simply search for an activity called input dialog. It's all drag and drop over here. Um, the title. This is what the box will say. I can just say enter item name, right? Label. Um, item this is what the box will hold by default uh, again we're looking for a text box okay uh, this is the, this is the, this is an interesting part so uh, what i can do is i can hard code the value hype i can hard code what i want when i'm trying to search so if i'm trying to search for a ps4 i can hard code it over here or what we can do is we can actually assign variables now I want to make global variables. So I'm going to select the whole sequence over here, this, this shopping bot box over here. I'm going to go to variables, create a variable. Let's call it item. Uh, let's call it input input name. Uh, no, item name. That's what that's what we're going to call it, right? It's going to be a string. Uh, this is the scope. This is this basically means that this is going to be a global variable, right? Um, like I said, it's giving me an error over there because it needs, if it's a string value, it needs to be inside quotation marks, right? So enter item name, right? It's fine. This should work, but you know, just for, okay. Uh, one more thing to add the variable that we have just created over here. We can just search for the variable. This is the variable we've created item name and that's it, right? So let's just, just test it out, please. All right. I'm expecting a dialog box. Yeah, enter item name, um, PS4. That's it. So this is where our action stops over here. We're not doing anything with the input so far. So that's where it stopped. Um, moving on, What's what do we want to do next? We want to open the browser, all right? So again, open browser. Drag and drop. Insert URL here. Uh, it's good practice to just open the browser and directly copy the URL instead of manually entering it. All right. So, let's copy it over here. Put it inside quotation marks. Do not forget that, please. Um, that's it. 
browser is going to open now what do we do here we are going to search for the box we're going to enter stuff over here right uh, so drop an activity here you can search over here type into remember this is how you type elements inside and element uh, this is how you type basically okay this is not this was supposed to work, it did not work. Let me try it again. Okay, this brings me to a very important part. All right, so the browser I'm trying to use is Chrome. All right, um, and the browser UA path de uh, by default opens is Internet uh, Explorer. All right, so first of all, I'm going to go to my browser over here. I'm going to search for UA path extension. You have path extension for Chrome. I'm gonna go here and okay. Go to home tools. Okay, go to home, go to tools. This is how you install the extension for the browser, right? Okay, it says that the extension is installed now. I need to enable it. UA path, UA path, UA path. Okay, it's enabled already. Okay, let's go back to Amazon.ae. Let's continue with what you, what you were actually doing. Uh, I'm gonna come here. This time, hopefully, when I try to type into something, it actually lets, lets me select Type into indicate element inside the browser. Okay, it's working now. What are we trying to search? Now here we are going to put in this value over here, item name. All right. Yeah. And what we're gonna do is we can either click this button over here, or what we normally do is we type in and then we just press enter. And for that, I'm just going to add in a plus over here quotation marks and then I tend to forget that that's, that's why I had it already copied over here so what this will do is this will just assume that you have pressed the enter key k stands for key enter stands for the enter key All right do you want to test it out okay uh, before we actually test it out since we changed our browser we can just to change our browser we press open browser over here, we go to browser type and we select Chrome. All right, that's it. Um, it's good practice to close the browser before you actually run, run the project again because it's going to open it, open the browser again in another window. All right, let's play. What are we expecting? It wants the item name. I'm going to press, it's going to type PS4. It opens Amazon.ae. I'm going to see it type in the box now PS4, enter. All right, that's it. So we are done with most of the most of the introductory part. Uh, what we're gonna do now is we want this to get this name, get this price, get this rating, and put it inside an Excel sheet. All right. Uh, let's do it for the first item, then we'll do it for for the first three items. All right. It's a lengthy process, but you know, just try to try to concentrate. All right. Please. Let's go back here now. Going top to bottom, the browser is open now. What do we want to do next? We want to get the first item. So you search for this box activity called get text. And again, you can indicate it. You just go here and you have to make sure that you select the first item, all right? Like you just select, you, get, you select exactly what, what you need. So what I can see is it's trying to select the rating over here as well, but now I'm going to go only for the title, all right? Can select the title. Actually, for now, we'll we'll, we'll, st we'll try to take baby steps, right? So you get this item over here, and we want to assign it to a var variable. So I'm going to declare another variable. Again, I'm going to declare it in the global scope and not the not only inside the browser. I'm going to select the shopping bot over here. I'm going to we're going to call this variable. Um, let's call it 
item one item just call it item right um, it, again I'm also going to declare price right now and I'm and I'm going to declare the rating as well right this is for future for now what we need is the item name only uh, just the item only right so <clears throat> I've declared a variable called item which is going to get this name over here and store it all right so what I want to do is I'm going to select this over here and I'm going to assign this to item right um, also the display name just for our own help right this is for our own reference only it's good practice right so we get this and then what we're going to do is we are going to store it in actually uh, let's just display it to the user right message box this is how you display items back to yourself right um, item that's it close the browser good practice run it again and hope it works all right enter item name ps4 opens amazon.a please search for the item enter sony playstation 4 1 tb voila it works all right that's the first thing i wanted to do all right okay uh, let's see if we can get the rating as well all right or the price let's start with the price so similarly i want to add another box over here get text get text what do we want the price right remember we already declared these variables right over here so that's why indicate element inside the browser i can select the whole thing or i can select just the just the value right i'm good i'm always going to try selecting the the value only right but it depends on website to website sometimes it all depends on how the value has been put over there and sometimes it's been put together sometimes it's been put in like so over here you can see there's a different font so it suggests that these values were stored as different kinds of uh different kinds of what variables right so uh what we're gonna do again we took the price now so i can display the item i can do an add addition over here and I can put the price right I can also add in a space over here all right play I forgot to close the browser but it should still work amazon.ae search for ps4 um, yeah did you get the price you got the price got it without the AED but that's fine for now all right okay moving on let's go back here and see if we can store these variables in an excel sheet all right so uh, i'm going to close this for now you can see there's an excel application scope over here on the left if you can't find it over here just search it all right um, excel application scope drag and drop okay where do i want it I can put it over here what's next so <clears throat> a work path uh, you just need to provide the path of a workbook if the workbook does not exist it will make the work for you but i what i'll do is i already have a workbook called shopping over here it's this one i'm going to go to prop go to, go to properties and i'm just going to copy it this right again inside text what comes next the name of the workbook itself it's called it's called shopping.xlsv right xlx xx my bad right okay now i'll drop in an activity which will create a row all right which will put the item inside a row so for Excel, it's called right cell, drag and drop, the name of the sheet. So um, if I open my sheet right now, if I open my Excel right now, right, I was testing it out. All right. So we have two sheets called Amazon and Known. And 
So over here I'll put in the, na the name of the first sheet. It's called Amazon. Amazon. This is where the this is where the row uh, this is where the item will go. A1. It will go over here in cell A1. The value. What did we get? The name of the first item. Uh, it's called item. That's the variable. Copy paste. Okay. Just press Control C and Control V, and it cop pasted this. It duplicated the this this activity over here. Right. Again, same sheet, but um, different cell. It's B1 now. I'm, I want the price over here. Press the price. Right. This should work. I'm gonna close it. Actually, I'll leave it open. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna close the browser. Okay. Open the browser. Um, PS4. Open the browser. Search for the item. Get the first item. Okay. Once the activity is complete, this will highlight, right? So I'm gonna check my Excel right now. I'm okay. I do not see the item over here. Let's see what went wrong. All right. We know that the price and item name are fine because we tested it tested it out before using the message box. So we just want to see why this sheet is not able to um, take it. Okay, I can actually see my mistake over here. Um, this extension does not seem right to me. It's supposed to be X X L S X. Right. I think I'm gonna try it again now. Hopefully this works. PS4, um, I think all's good now. That seemed like an obvious mistake to me. Uh, PS4, oh, okay, Amazon, thank you. Okay, that's the name of the item and that's the price, right? What we're gonna do is now, we will see if we, we can get the first three items, right? So what comes to your mind when I say, um, Actually, I'll just say it now, all right. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna create a while loop, all right. I'm gonna create a while loop. Again, yes, UI path allows you to create while loops. It allows you to put uh, conditional statements like if, if and else. It also lets you put, put in switch cases. So um, I'm gonna try using all three of them somehow uh, while trying to explain this workshop to you, all right. So I come back here. Uh, Okay, so what we're gonna do here is, I'm gonna put in a while loop over here. Actually, I'm gonna, I'm going to delete this from here, and I'm gonna delete this from here, all right? You'll see why, all right? So I'm gonna search for the item. Now I'll create a while loop over here, all right? Create a while loop. The the condition is while counter is less than four, right? Now it gives you an error because we do not have a variable called counter for now. So I'm going to go to shopping bot. Actually, I'm going to go to open browser. I'm going to declare the variable counter. This is an integer. Uh, value by default is one, right? We will set it to one because we want to put the values over here in ranges and this does not have a zero. So that's it. So as long as counter is number four is less than four, keep executing. So again, this is the body. We put in the get text boxes again. I put in three boxes. One, two, three. Okay, three boxes for three different elements. You go to Amazon.ae, select the first price, uh, not the first price, the first item. Go to the second box, we'll select the price now. And third element is the rating, right? It's a little more complicated than that. Uh, when I say complicated, what I mean is, this will not always be the case. If you're trying to search for a different item, sometimes it may give you an ad over, over there in the box. So it is not searching by uh, location name. It's actually searching by it's actually searching by the location name. It's not searching by the first item over here. There is no definite order to this to how Amazon displays displays these results to you. Similarly, uh, the order might change for noon. The order might change for Alibaba. 
whatever all right so for now i'll try to keep it simple all right we'll see if we have time to cover up a different search result all right so for now um, this is it again uh, going back to our practices over here first one this is the name second one this is the price third one being the rating right come on all right when you go back to the name I remember I named the variable as item. For the price, I named, named it as price, and third one being the rating, all right? Okay, um, that's it. Um, we got the three values. What What's the next thing that I want to do? I want to go down and I want to increase the count, right? So, Another thing that comes to my mind right now is I can actually use a switch case over here, all right? I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this, the whole thing over here. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to put in a switch case over here. I will show you exactly why we need the switch case now. So you go to switch, um, enter the expression. What do you want to run the switch on? You want to run, run, run it on the counter. Case number one, if the counter is one, do this, right? I pasted the body over here, right? Let's just leave it like that, right? I can delete this. I don't need this now. Okay, if, this case, if the case is one, do this, all right? Now, if what happens if the case is two? I'm gonna, gonna, gonna. I already have it copied, so I'm gonna paste it again. But this time, I'm going to indicate values for item number two over here. All right. Similarly for the price, and same thing for the rating. All right. Do you understand what I'm actually trying to do right now? Okay. Because I know that Amazon will have to search for this product and then for this product. So. For that, I'm using a switch case. If the so if the counter is at one, get me the first item. If the counter is at two, give me the second item. If the counter is at three, and so on. All right. So uh, similarly, I'm going to copy this, and I'm going to paste it in case number three. The counter is three. Get me item number three, please. Okay, for the price and the rating. Please work. All right, good. Now this all stays the same because you, it all needs to stay the same, all right? So once the switch is over, remember it's all inside a while loop. So at the end of the while loop, I want to make sure that my counter is actually getting iterated, all right? So I'll add in a value over here. It's called assign. So what assign does is. For the value for the variable counter, I want you to add one. I want you to iterate it by one value, right? Add account. Add add one one number to it. Right? Increase the counter by one. That's how you do it, right? Um, I don't think plus plus works. Yeah. So we are used to plus plus, but yeah, this is how you're gonna do it. This is how you increase the counter, and this is going to run how many times? One. It's gonna start at one, two, three, four. So it's gonna run three times. And um, once it's done, it's going to move on and go to this one over here. So Amazon item price, right? Um, now what I'm thinking is, is a while loop. It goes on, goes on, goes on. But when it comes to this application scope over here, it only it will only run run once, right? So what I want to do is I'm going to copy this application scope and I'm going to put it inside the while loop as well. I'm going to put it over here. All right. And you can just drag and drop over here. I'm going to put this activity over here before we assign, before we change the counter. So what this will do is this will go on a continuous loop. It will get the item. It will get the first item. 
then it will put the values of the first item inside the excel sheet it will increase the counter then it will go for the second item again repeat the process right this is what we're trying to achieve now we have done a lot of work right now without any testing so i'm kind of worried but um, i believe it should work okay over here what we want to do is it's not always going to be a1 i'm just going to erase the one i'm going to add in the counter over here and i'm going to because my counter is an integer and this is, this is expecting a string value, we can use the function to string. It's a default visual basic function. Uh, yeah, that should do it. Similarly for b, b plus counter dot to string, right? We have the price, we have the, now we need the weighting as well. Counter c variable is ready okay if all is well this should work increase the counter I don't need the scope anymore so we're done okay I'm actually a little nervous before running it but I know it should work, it should work. We, we have worked so hard for it right so uh, let's just go and run it ask me for the item for test Till now, I'm going to keep the keep my search results the same. I'm always going to search for PS4 because I don't I know it's not going to be able to find all the other items. Okay, it's done. Thank you. So what happened is we got all three items over here. We got the names, we got the prices, and we got the ratings. Let's see if it matches what what we are seeing in the browser. So 1629. Sorry. 1629. Okay, 76. This is not 76. 1457. Okay, it went for the second item. Again, so you see what happened over here. When you search for the item, the layout changed over here. That's why it... Because when when we actually put the values over there, this was in this position. So this is a little complicated. I'll see if I can cover it by the end of this uh, workshop. But for now, uh, what our goal was to get the first three items we see and bring them over here. And so far in a way it has worked uh, okay let's see if we can do the same for uh, for noon.com right we'll go to our shopping board over here we will scroll down actually uh, what we, I can just close this over here I'm gonna copy it I'm gonna paste it now you have probably already guessed what I'm gonna do next uh, I can hard code it but no I'm gonna go search for noon.com Cut this value and paste it over here and enclose it inside exclamation marks. <coughs> Same thing, enter the item name, but this time I'm, we are going to select a different element. We want to type over here. Yeah, it should work. Counters less than four. Okay, um, things change a lot when the website itself changes. So we're still searching for PS4, right? Open up. Okay, um, it's not right. Case number one, indicate the element. This is the element that we want, all right. Indicate the price, here's our price, and indicate the rating, the rating. Okay, uh, what I noticed right now is that not all items over here have ratings. So when I'm trying to select a rating over here, this is not gonna work. So uh, let's select the rating for the first one for now. What I'm going to do is when the browser opens, I am going to add in another option. I'm going to add in a click and what I'm going to do is I'm going to just click over here so that it selects at least, you know, there's some rating to show over here. So indicate the element and just press halfway through, right? This will work um, hopefully. Yeah, let's just try it now. Okay. Get the item, get the price. I'm going to press it right now so that I can select the item properly. Case number two, you select the item. You select item number two. You select the price. And you select the weighting. Similarly for item number three,
price and the rating. Okay, good enough. This time I'm going to use my other sheet, sheet number two. Okay, I think so far so good. This should work, hopefully, all right. Now you remember that the counter value, I declared it, like for the counter variable, I made sure that it wasn't a global variable. I'm just gonna go back and check it because what I'm realizing right now is if the counter variable is a global variable, by the end of this first, by the end of this Amazon function, the counter variable is going to be at four or three. It's gonna be at three, right? So I wanna make sure that it goes back to zero. What I can simply do is I can just go here and go to counter. Okay, I can just put in an, an, another assign function over here. Counter is equal to one, right? Default, right? Similarly, I'll do the same for the for the next one. Counter is equal to one, right? Okay, um, let's try it now, right? It's gonna work. I forgot to close the browser again, but PS4, open Amazon, search for PS4, enter, get the first three items. Okay, go to noon.com, search for PS4. Okay, took longer. I changed the rating, okay, and get the first three items. Once it glows, it means that the sequence is over, let's see. This is Amazon, this is noon. Okay, we could not get the price for this one. Again, this basically means that the order changed over here. Either, either the order changed or I selected some other value, but um, we were expecting to see the price over here. <clears throat> it did not work entirely as I expected it to work. Let's just check it out again. All right, so something that you need to always remember when it comes to UA path is that it's always going to be trial and error, all right? You will never get 100% right in the first try. That's why you have the option to run the run the process through, all right? And that's why you need to keep doing it, right? The same applies to coding, basic coding, basic programming as well. Every time you get, every chance you get to test it, just test it out, right? You will save yourself a lot of headache, right? And so what happened here was when I search for the price over here, it did not give me one one double line. Instead it gave me gave me some other value that I, I can't even see right now. All right. So what we'll do is I'm gonna go back over here. I'm gonna to go to my price for the for case number one for noon. Yeah, noon's over here. I'm going to go over here to case number one. I'm going to go to the price. Indicate the price. And I'm going to just just for just to reconfirm, I'm going to select the name again as well. Rating is fine. Let's run it through. Hope it works. All right. Moon dot A. Okay. Got the price fine this time around, so uh, 1199. Okay, um, that's it from the workshop for now. Um, I also want to cover something else, but I don't think we have the time for it right now. Um, but what I want, what I want to cover in the future is that <clears throat> the search result changes, all right? Right now, if I search for a different item, the layout will change very dramatically. Okay, it stays the same over here, on, uh, but for Amazon, sometimes there might be an ad over there in the same place. And what UiPath does is, it's searching for the place, searching for the item in that particular place. It's not searching for that. There's no definite order to the way Amazon or Noon arranges their items on the website. That's why if I search for a different item, this might not work at all, right? But what you've learned today is you have learned how to open the browser. First of all, how to take input from the user how to actually open the browser, how to configure Chrome to work with this UiPath. We have seen how counters can be applied over here. 
we have seen how we can type a search into a browser we can we have also seen how we are using while loops over here how we can use switch cases case number one two three you can put like 30 different cases over here and how you can iterate over how you can take one item put and write it to an excel sheet over here uh, you have learned how to put items from the browser from your search result over here from a search result and put it in an excel sheet right so you can do that and there are endless possibilities over here it depends on how creative you can be with this right um, i tried to cover as much as i could in the time frame um, but for in the future if, if there's if there's another workshop that i do for you um, we can define a time like suppose at 12 pm every day in the morning i want to i want to send an email out to someone or maybe i want to send out 100 emails i want ui path to just open up open my email log into my account or it's you log in using the safe details um, search for an email send an email send a new newsletter to that person and i can repeat the process every morning for a different newsletter all right so again endless possibilities um, if there's any feedback leave it in the video please um, so uh, yeah so that's it from the workshop i hope you were able to learn something new i hope you enjoyed it as well i hope you were able to follow me along um, we will try to cover rps in the future as well um, it's, a, it's, an, uh, it's a growing industry it's as more companies grow as more companies implement rps the applications also increase as well um, that's it um, like this video please subscribe to our youtube channel follow us on our social media um, thank you um, have a good day everyone